Hello again, this is Rich Troxler, aka Rich Trox, and welcome to the first in a new series of videos I'll be doing on developing strategies for catching fish from the surf. I've been fishing for over 45 years, most of it along the northeastern shores of the U.S. for predatory species such as striped bass, bluefish, weakfish, redfish, speckled trout, and fluke as well as a variety of bait-eating species. But the information I'll be providing can be pretty much used anywhere there is a shore-based fishery for predatory and bait-eating species. And now for the disclaimer. The information provided on this video is based solely on my own experiences and is not intended to be the be-all or end-all of fishing. It is intended solely to stimulate thought, provide direction, and encourage experimentation in the sincere hope that it may be of help to you on your surf fishing journey. End of disclaimer. The first video is a primer on what I feel is needed in order to develop an effective strategy for catching fish. Subsequent videos will delve further into the component parts of the strategy, such as wind, tides, and other conditions, as well as discussing gear, techniques, and the physical and mental aspects of the surf fishing game. I will be covering a lot of topics in this series, many of them in great detail, but always from the top down so that those new to the sport can integrate the information in a systematic manner. So let's get started. If you fish, then your rule of thumb should be that you can't catch what isn't there. Sounds simple enough, but it always surprises me how many people still rely on luck when they fish from the surf. They march down to the beach, spike a couple of rods, and wait. When asked what they are fishing for, the typical answer is anything that bites. That kind of approach to fishing is good for catching a tan, but little else. So in order of importance, here are the four things I feel you need to be thinking about in order to develop a strategy for catching fish consistently. The first is fish species. The second is bait. The third is structure. And the fourth is conditions. Many fish species migrate in and out of areas depending on the season. Other species may stay in the area the entire year, but go semi-dormant during the colder months. Some areas that are warm all year round may have migrations based on bait or forage movement. There are other reasons why fish migrate or move around within an area, but the why is less important than the when. Once again, you can't catch what isn't there. So the first step toward developing a plan of action is to know what your local species are and when they come and go. Learn where they migrate to and from, and what conditions can affect the migration timetable. Will they show up early or late this year? Will they leave early or stay late this year? Try to develop an understanding of all the factors that influence their migration patterns so that you can try to put yourself in the right place at the right time. This not only applies to annual cycles of migration, it also applies to any local in-season migration patterns, such as movements from bay to ocean, ocean to bay, shallow water to deeper water, brackish water to salt water, etc. Learn what triggers these movements. Is it water temps, wind direction, bait movement, or a combination of some or all of these conditions? Keeping a fishing log is helpful over time in answering these questions, so always ask yourself why something is taking place or not taking place and record your observations. In addition to their movements, make the effort to learn as much about your target species as possible. This is the age of the internet and getting information has never been easier, so learn what makes them tick. What are their favored weather and water conditions? What do they eat throughout the year? gears and techniques used to catch them, past fishing reports, anything that seems relevant. Fire up your browser and make a folder system for storing web pages with useful information and do some research. If you live in a seasonal zone, then put your winter downtime to good use. Rods and reels don't catch fish. Knowledge does. So knowing your target species goes a long way in helping to catch them. In its simplest form, bait is the reason that predatory fish are in any given area. No bait, no fish. It's pretty much that simple. Anybody who has witnessed the striped bass sand eel bites along the northeast coast can attest to the power and draw of abundant bait. If you were fishing where the sand eels were, then fishing was easy. If you were not where the sand eels were, then you might as well have been fishing in a puddle. This is why learning about bait is so important. It's the engine that drives the machine. Like most predatory fish, many species of bait follow annual migration patterns. And like some predatory fish, some species of bait have local in-season movements. Some types of bait may not have any movement at all, such as shellfish and sea worms. 
Because of these factors, predatory species will typically undergo changes in their diets throughout the season, based on what bait happens to be abundant at the time. Sometimes a bait migration is the harbinger of fishing to come, where species you desire to catch follow the annual migration of a particular bait species, in effect, where one goes, the other follows. Local weather conditions can also have a profound effect on where bait might be located, or which particular species becomes the bait du jour for that day. I will cover more on this later in this video and in greater detail in subsequent videos. For those who fish plugs and artificials, knowing what baits are around is especially important as the old adage of matching the hatch comes into play here. While not etched in stone, you usually can't go wrong fishing profiles similar to the baits present at the time. Where plug selection is concerned, I've always used a simple matrix for choosing my profiles. Based on the types of bait I expect to find, I figure my target species are either looking up or looking down, and they're on either big bait or small bait, so I choose my profiles accordingly. I will talk about this in detail in future videos, but for now suffice it to say that bait is the engine that drives the whole machine, so it pays to become a bait hound. I always consider structure to occupy the third level of importance when putting together an effective strategy for catching fish. The reason is this. The nicest structure in the world means nothing if fish are not present. So first you need fish in the area, and if they are in the area, more than likely they are there because of bait. Then, and only then, does structure come into play. Structure does not magically produce fish. I won't be going into any detail on locating and identifying structure in this video because I've already covered this topic extensively in previous videos and will be producing future videos on how to fish these structures. The important thing to understand in the context of this video is that structure is nothing more than a feeding advantage to predatory fish and sometimes a perceived hiding place for certain bait species. It can and does draw them both. So whether you are walking out onto a beach, an inlet, a bay, or a channel shore, you should know what you are looking at and more importantly, what to look for. If you haven't already done so and you want to gain a further understanding of structure and how to identify it, you may want to view the following videos. Understanding wave and wave action, identifying sandbars, troughs, and cuts, and holes, points, lips, and rips. These will be helpful in understanding concepts presented in future videos. To me, condition seems more of a subset of the other three previous items than a true standalone item. This is because most conditions are short-term, not predictable, and can have a variety of effects on the other three items. When I speak of conditions, it includes, but is not limited to the following. Tidal stage, moon phase, current flow and sweep, water temperature, water clarity, wind speed and direction, and ambient light. While learning about fish species, bait species, and structure is fairly straightforward, Predicting the effects of these conditions on any or all of those items can be tricky at best. These conditions, alone and in combination, can produce an almost unlimited number of outcomes when planning your fishing strategies. Once again, I will go into more detail on conditions in future videos, but for now, I will give some basic examples and interactions, just to illustrate how important it is to understand the effects that these conditions can have. Let's start at tidal stage and run through some interactions with the other conditions. Tidal stage dictates water depth. Whether fish in the open beach or a bay, water depth can vary greatly depending on the stage of the tide. So the area you are fishing may only produce on the higher stages of the tide. This is typical of ocean beaches. Bait may be moved out of hiding by dropping water. This is common for bay waters. Tides run higher during the full and new moon phases. Bright moon nights can adversely affect the fishing for some species, but may be beneficial for others. Some bait species mate during moon cycles. Some migrate. Bright moon nights can also lessen the effect of fire in the water, which are the small bioluminescent organisms that glow when disturbed. Incoming and outgoing tides produce much stronger current flow during the full and new moons. In inlets, canals, and channels, this may produce a feeding advantage for predatory fish and adverse conditions for small bait. In most bays, rivers, and backwater areas, during the spring and fall, the water temperatures are warmer on the outgoing tide than on the incoming. 
This is due to the water which has been warmed in the shallows being pulled back into the channels in deeper areas as the water recedes. This can create a food chain event resulting in predatory fish going on the feed. Conversely, in the warm summer months, the cooler water coming in from the ocean may be the key that sparks the bite. Water temps in conjunction with moon phases can also trigger migration in bait species. The higher tides of the full and new moon will frequently put more eelgrass or other washed up aquatic vegetation back into the water, making it difficult to fish through. During warmer months, higher water temperatures may trigger algae blooms in areas of low current or back bays. Wind speed and direction affect many aspects of fishing. Whether or not it's a good thing or a bad thing depends on where you are. It can speed up or hold up a tide. It can blow bait up onto a shore or move it off the shore. It can dirty up the water with big surf, making it impossible to fish, or it can flatten the surf out like a lake. It can be the best of times or the worst of times. The short version of ambient light is that some predatory fish prefer low light conditions. Some prefer night. Others just don't care. So certain combinations of conditions may produce much better in low light or at night. Again, all depending on the species sought, the prevailing bait patterns, and the available structure. The above examples are minimalistic at best. The intent is to show the part that conditions can play when devising an effective strategy for catching fish. In reality, conditions affect every predatory species, every bait species, and every type structure or location differently. So you can't just plug this stuff into a matrix and expect an answer. Also, not all conditions are equally ranked in terms of importance, and this too depends on the species of fish in bait and the area being fished. For example, a big blow on the ocean may render it unfishable, regardless of the water temps, tidal stage, or moon phase, but a nearby bay or backwater area might still be fishable. So gaining an understanding of how conditions affect your local area will be key in developing an effective strategy, and keeping a detailed log will be helpful to that end. As I'm fond of saying, rods and reels don't catch fish. Knowledge does. But gaining knowledge takes time, and there's no better teacher than experience. In this age of instant gratification, many just wish to download the cheats and win the game. The concept of process gets lost in the techno shuffle. Learning to fish is a lifelong process. It never stops. So savor the victories, learn from the defeats, and most of all, enjoy the ride. That's my view from the beach, so until next time, be well and catch him up.